Welcome to the Eight in the Box podcast. Today is December 28th. It's Tuesday. It's a big day of bowl games today, but we already talked about those bowl games in, on the last episode of this show where we talk football. Uh, presented by Cash Considerations, this is going to be the New Year's Eve and New Year's Day bowl game special. My name is Dave Sherapan. I am the Sportsbook Conciliary. You can find me at SportsBKCansig on the Twitter. And with me today, as always, quarterbacking the whole operation, Brad Howe at Brad Howe07. B Howe coming off a GWG 22 to 1 shot. Feeling good. All these bowl games. Breaking national news. Good afternoon. Good morning. Good evening. I don't even know what time it is, but how are you? I'm I'm wonderful. Thank you for the intro. And yeah, in our game within the game, we had a nice little hit on Monday yeah. Night Football. We talked about the Miami defense. They like to score first, put a little 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 sprinkle on the plus twenty two hundred, <laughs> and by God, it cashed. And what was an ugly? That wasn't hard though, right? It's an ugly offensive game. Ian Book first start. You knew the defense had to step up. They did. We like those. Unbelievable. I mean, not really, but yes. And then when it hits and you're on social media and you get to tell everybody about it, sometimes <laughs> you just get them right. And, you know, you got to crow a little bit when you get it right. Um, yeah, which is why, crow, Dave, which is why we probably shouldn't even be doing this show. Should probably, probably just be not. done. The Right? You hit the defensive first touchdown, probably don't make any other picks ever. That's a walk off. You're like, you just got to just, you, just that, you get a week off. You just disappear. And, and and ride that one, but that's not what we're doing. We're coming right back, and we're going to talk some college football. Maybe we'll find some winners here today. I was going to say, speaking of eating crow, we got the producer uh, Dan Alexander at Newbie Talks coming off of another Eagles win, and just Newbie, how you feeling today? You feeling all right? Well, I thought you know I had the Eagles anytime defensive touchdown score on Sunday. They had the pick six. I was at the game. My brother and I went crazy. It was plus four thirty, and I was feeling good. Ooh. Then I scroll through Twitter, see the plus twenty two hundred for my boys. I was like, man, road with them, but uh, doing great, man. Nice to be doing the show a day early for the folks. That's right. So. What we're going to do today is pretty simple. We got, you know, right back to our roots. We're going to, you know, bang out eight games quick. Um, you know, a little analysis of each and maybe, you know, find a nugget here or there to go with. Um, you know, the games, uh, I'm glad they're playing. them. I mean, we've already had a couple cancellations and stuff. So um, we're just going to go kind of in order, but out of order to get to the last two games are going to be the big playoff games because those are the ones that everybody's talking about on Friday. So, B. Howe, with that, take it away, sir. Where are we going first? Let's jump in. You know how much I love these Bulls, and this is probably the best week of the Bulls season. I mean, they roll. We're recording this on Tuesday. There's five games today, which we talked about in the last episode, if you want this. So it really kicks in, and enjoy it. The, the days of college football for this season are counting down. We don't have many left. So let's get in and let's enjoy them. You, but tread lightly. You got to tread lightly, Dave, because these cancellations, the opt-outs, yeah. the COVID situation is, a, is an absolute circus right now. So tread lightly. Take some nuggets that we give you, but do your own research before you put any bets in there. There's my disclaimer for the day. The, the day on Tuesday is five games. Houston, Auburn, Louisville Air Force, Texas Tech, Mississippi State, NC State, UCLA, and then the night game, West Virginia, Minnesota. We talked about them on the last episode. Is there anything changed? Like, because the lines haven't changed that much since the last episode. So I looked this morning and thought, should we give a little, you know, nugget or disclaimer at the beginning of this show for anything that may have changed? I don't see anything, to be perfectly honest. There really isn't much in any of those games today that I thought, oh, there's a big opt out. Oh, there's nobody not playing. Like, because we saw it yesterday with Western Michigan and Nevada. Yeah. Like when, Nevada was like the whole, I mean, the staff, there was a bunch All of, of kids. Them. Nobody was playing. Nobody was left. Everybody yeah. was out. And that line had flipped from, you know, plus seven to minus seven. And it still was a railroad train. I don't see anything today. I mean, you're really close to the West Virginia, Minnesota, you know, situation. Nothing has really changed much, has it? No, that line sat between four. It touched six a little bit. It's been right in there and it settled at five. The totals ticked down just a hair. It's been 46 to 45. 
now down to 44 and a half. No, yeah. everything's about the same as we talked. Mississippi State, a little bigger favorite now. That's bumped up a point. NC yeah. State up a point, but basically the, the same area where we talked about. Nothing earth shattering from any of those games as we get ready to play them today. Okay. All right. Just wanted to, to give the people that. And again, you can download uh eight in a box so hit the subscribe button you can get all this stuff right away go back listen to the past episodes if you want to look at the games today and tomorrow but we'll, let's get to it um what do you got on the rundown starting us off for this show yeah this this fits right into what we just said about tread lightly with the chaos and the covid covid news and the opt outs this is the definition of that gator bowl wake oh. forest not against texas a&m they're getting Rutgers, believe it or not. This was yeah. one that came down last week. AM out. Rutgers gets in because it's the best five and seven team in terms of APR, the academic ratings that uh, the NCAA puts out. Rutgers is in. And this was really fascinating, Dave. From a, I'm glad they're playing the game. Listen, I'm glad they're playing the game. I've been to the Gator Bowl many times as a member of the WV Athletic Department. Awesome bowl, awesome area. They do a great job. I'm glad to see the game being played. But man, is this ever a mismatch? And I know the line reflects it. Wake yeah. Forest favored by 14 and a half. They've had a great year. I'm happy for those guys that they get to finish their year with a with a really good bowl. They deserve that. Sam Hartman at quarterback's fantastic. He's right up against 4,000 yards passing. He's run for another 500. He's got 47 touchdowns total. The Wake offense is what you want to watch in this one. They're going against a Rutgers team that Dave just isn't good. That's why they weren't in a bowl. They have only won two games since September 18th, two and seven mm -hmm. since September 18th. You're a big 10 guy. Their wins are Illinois and Indiana. So I, I know that's a big number. I don't know how you do anything, but wake forest or pass on this as Rutgers. Keep in mind this Rutgers wasn't even together. They, they were working to get their team back together as they're accepting a bid to the Gator bowl. They don't even have their group together. They disbanded and gone the to their different spots. They, for the holidays that nobody was yeah together. so they hadn't been practicing they're going to come in on short notice so happy for them this is a great bowl game for them best in, in Rutgers history believe it or not at five and seven this to me is is wake in a showcase game man oh man so this line they were playing Texas A&M like you said and the line was around Texas A&M minus six and a half six seven bounce around and now it goes to Wake Forest being a huge favorite I mean Everything that they were prepping for was as an underdog role against Texas A&M and SEC school, and now they're playing Rutgers. It's almost like a fight, right, where, you know, you've been training and training and training, and then the guy gets hurt three days before the fight, and they bring in some guy and say, okay, you're fighting this guy now. And it's supposed to be a tomato can where you're supposed to go in and beat him up, and – what could happen? You might get hit in the face. You might, I mean, people aren't betting this like Rutgers has any chance. It's gone from 14 opening. I saw 13 quick. Um, it's disappeared. It's 15. The total 62, um, which was close to the original total 59 when they were playing um, Texas A&M. I agree with you. I don't think, I don't think it should be anything, should be anything but Wake Forest. But Wake Forest. But it's a pass for me. I, I mean, it's an 8 a.m. start on Friday morning here out west. Like, this is one of those ones. Like, last week, Newby said he's got to set his alarm for some of these games. I'd am going to have to set my alarm for this game uh, because I don't think – again, you'll be watching it. I'll catch the second half. Let's put it that way. Here's the other one. Let's just start off because we're going to say it a bunch. This is also one where you could get me on in-game absolutely. If Rutgers comes out fired up, gets a couple stops or a turnover, a short field, and they score, and I can get that line under 14 and a half and get a better number, I wouldn't be opposed to that with Wake either. Would you be ever at that point looking to take Rutgers? Like if they get no. down, like like that's one where, no. you know, you go, oh, it's 21. Maybe I should grab it now. No, I'm good. Like Wake could run this thing up. Like Wake team total – might be the play here. If you could get a number, it's probably what, 28 or no, it's probably 30. Well, it might be 35. Without looking, I'm guessing it's it's probably in the in the low 30s. So I don't know. That that might be a, a better way to attack it where you could go 
just on the team to keep scoring, I don't think there's going to be any taking a foot off the gas pedal, right? This is going to be one of those. I'm looking. I'm on. I'm on DraftKings where I am. Which, by the way, shout out to your hat there. It looks beautiful. DraftKings Sportsbook, thirty-eight and a half team total for Wake. Oh, my. thirty-eight and a half where I am. So to answer your question, no. But now you could sell me on Wake Forest drop their drop their intensity just a little bit when they saw it wasn't a and m they see it's a rutgers team right. they should beat they come out and rutgers is really jacked up early and plays hard defensively forces some turnovers which they do and it's an ugly close first half but that's why i'm going to watch in game i'm i'm wake on this side and if wake scores quickly and early and the line gets away then i just watch the game and we move on and we get ready for this next one that's how wake i'm going to 10 and 3 during a regular season but only 6 and 7 against the spread I mean, I'd have to go back and look through the whole schedule, but that one makes me a little nervous laying a big number, right? Like, I, I don't know. I mean, this might be the biggest spread they've had maybe in 10 years. Like, they, they haven't been – they're not 14-point, 15-point favorites over anybody. So, well, let again. Me, but let me give you this. Here, Here's just real quick, and we're spending too much time on this game. I'll okay. just tell you that right now. Yeah. But the last, the last few games for Rutgers – they got beat by 24. This is working backwards from the end of the season. Okay. 24 by Maryland. Yeah. 28 by Penn State. Yeah. They beat Indiana. Uh, 49 by Wisconsin. Beat Illinois. 14 by Northwestern. 18 by Michigan State. Okay. Almost 40 by Ohio State. So they they've had some. They've gotten drilled a few times. Blow out. Blow out. All right. Move on. Yes. Move sir. on. We got we got one that's more exciting, especially to you. I can't wait to hear what you're going to give me here. Your Penn State Nittany Lions against the, as Les Miles once said, the Arkansas Razorbacks, the Arkansas <laughs> yeah. Razorbacks. This is one where the lines flipped, and a lot of that's due to Penn State's opt-outs. Yes. Your boys have a lot of guys out. Defensive yes. coordinator on his way to Virginia Tech is the head coach. Dotson, one of the best receivers in the country. He's out. Top two tacklers at linebacker. Penn State, out. So this is a lot of opt-outs here. I liked Arkansas. I took Arkansas at plus three and a half early when these lines first came out. Now Arkansas is favored by one. What do you do now? Oh, well, I want to shout out Julian Edelman for uh, give, sending me the starter pack for the holidays for the DraftKings. I was going to wear the Penn State jersey, and I didn't want to wear the Penn State jersey for the show. Now, hold on, hold on, hold on. It's Julian Edlo. Edlo, The, the former Edelman. Patriots receiver. The former Patriots receiver did not send you stuff. Our guy Julian Edlo at Julian Edlo from DraftKings. I tried to do that. I I, I, I do that all the time when I talk. I, I talk know you do him. that because that's what you you call him that, but the people don't know that's what I, you call it. I know. Thank you for it's it's Edlo <laughs> Julian Edlo on the Twitter. I call him Edelman just because I like the name Julian, and that was what I was going to name a son if I ever had a son was Julian, so I could call him Jules. And I always do that to him. Thank you for correcting me. Thank you for also reminding me that on this Penn State Arkansas game, that we talked about this a couple of weeks ago. We threw it in as a look ahead, and you mentioned the opt outs, and I was like, "Well, you have to bet Arkansas right now, then, and take the points." And this thing has flipped, um, and I was gonna like it's bold, you know, extravaganza part three. I wanted to wear the Penn State thing. I'm not excited for Penn State because the best players aren't playing in the game. So now it's like, man, uh, and you've told us about this, like being in the, in the locker room and at the practice, but this is different when guys are choosing to not play and there's chaos of people leaving and stuff. I liked Arkansas plus the points before now does the line swing. Does that worry you? Is that, is that enough to get you off the game? I don't think it is. I mean, it's only you're laying one point. Okay, so you could have taken three. Okay, well, or you could have taken four. Sure, you wish you got the better price, but, I mean, all you got to do is win the game now. All right. Is, I think Arkansas is going to win the game. The total the total is, is now in play on the over. I like the under when I thought we were having, you know, the full rosters. And the number's gone up. I mean, I'm seeing 47s and stuff now. I feel like this one might go over. Arkansas is going to be able to run the ball. You know, the two the two biggest uh, you know defensive guys for for Penn State aren't playing, and the coordinator's gone. I don't know, man. I I, I like Penn, I like Arkansas. I mean, you? Yeah. 
Yeah, I do too. I'm 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 gonna hold at my plus three and a half on Arkansas. Yeah. But yeah, if you told me you were betting Arkansas on the money line or the favorite minus one, okay, I still take that. I'm exactly with yeah. you right there. I mean, Penn State, and I don't need to tell you this, but we just mentioned Rutgers wins said in September. Penn State's kind of in the same boat. Let me read you their wins since the end of September. Villanova, Indiana, Maryland, and Rutgers. So Penn State not lighting the world on fire for the last three months of the season. Now, I will say this. They have five losses by a combined 21 points. Yeah. So they, they've been in games, but this one just feels like it, it's Arkansas. Arkansas had a really overachieving season, better than what most people thought. I thought they looked good at times. K.J. Jefferson was fantastic at quarterback. I think they're going to run it on Penn State. And as you mentioned, this is not the same Penn State team. Give me Arkansas here. Maybe if we could ask Julian Edelman to come back and, and play for Penn State, catch a pass or two, maybe we would help that. No, I, I don't think I, – I just don't – I don't like the shot of uh, – I think it's going to take not a Herculean effort, but I think Penn State is going gonna, is gonna to need a lot of breaks. If the game just plays out with minimal turnovers and the teams do what they do best, I think Arkansas wins the game. And, again, we get an SEC team at a very short number now. They were getting points before. Not that the Big Ten team can't win, but I, I mean, it's just one of those things. We've seen so many in the past. Arkansas is going to win the game. What do they say? Pig suey? Is that the thing that they say? Is that yeah, I'm not, I'm not going to, I'm not going to call the hogs here, but yes, that's woo pig suey. Okay. But you got to do, you got to, you got to call the hogs, but I'm not calling the hogs. I don't want to do that. I don't want I mean, I mean, people like Penn State watch the show, my buddies and stuff. I can't do that. I mean, I was going to no, come on and do a we are Penn State and all that stuff. I'm just not – It's this one has been deflated for me. I mean, give me the next game. What do we got? Well, th- I'm, a- I'm anxious to watch this next one. This should be fun. Oklahoma State and Notre Dame. I'm actually this excited one, to watch well, this one too. I-, I might be flipping myself around here. I took Notre Dame really early on this one, and the more I'm diving into this, I, I don't quite know here. So fascinating – storylines both off the field and on the field. We know Brian Kelly is out. He's in Louisiana doing fake accents at basketball games. He yes. got paid. He's there. The team seems really excited about the new head coach, Marcus Freeman, on. Yeah. They love him. You saw the video of him bursting through, yeah. people going bananas with him. The team seems to have really rallied around this new group. Tommy Rees staying as offensive coordinator. But they've got some opt-outs as well. Their best running back, Kyron Williams, out of this game I think that's a big one Kyle Hamilton the all-world safety for them he's out as well so those start to concern me a little bit on the Oklahoma State side you've heard me talk about that defense all year long I mean it's absolutely elite it's grown men playing on that side of the ball they are top five in every category I can give you they are awesome on defense their DC he's headed to Ohio State but he is going to coach in this game but they're a really veteran team, so how much does that really matter? The question here to me is Spencer Sanders. He managed the game really well most of the year. Big 12 title game, though, four interceptions. Baylor wins that game over Oklahoma State. Can Notre Dame's defense do enough to put this game in the hands of Spencer Sanders and then force a couple mistakes? So, again, I'm already on Notre Dame minus two, but I tell you what, if, if you want to talk me into Oklahoma State, I think you can do it. This defense is lights out, Dave. Totals 45 and a half. There's a couple 46s. Um, how do you think the game plays out to the total? Under? It's Oklahoma State. So this is what this is our first one. Newbie can hit the sound effect. This would be my first show me. I would lean under until someone shows me they can score points on Oklahoma State. I was waiting. He ain't there. He ain't there. <laughs> I thought I was waiting for the show. Me, what you got? Oh, so I I played it and uh, I was muted on the Zoom call. So this is the behind uh-huh. the scenes of what happens on the show. I didn't I didn't want your like audio like me laughing to mess you guys up. Um, so uh, it was played though. That's on oh, me. Okay, All right. thank, thank you, thank you, All right. Dave. Great. Real quick, one more. Only one team has scored more than twenty four on Oklahoma State, and that was Oklahoma. They've held wow. seven teams seven teams under one hundred yards rushing. Yeah. Game plays to the under, okay. I, I I mean that's what I think. That's the I think that's the best play in the game because it's one. Literally, this one feels like a coin flip, like one turnover away. 
if I have to bet it, I personally want to see Notre Dame win. And I never say that. I don't like Notre Dame at all. Haven't for years. But I loved that hype video. And I thought after Kelly left and talking about his family and all that other stuff that he's doing down there down in Louisiana now, it's pretty amazing to me. And if I was in that room, I'd want to play and win just to kind of show him, you know, yeah. we got this. There'll be like, some of that. Yeah. Yeah. You know, yeah. so you can feel that in a room, but all that, what's the play? What's the ball is kicked off. None of that matters. And you got to score against that Oklahoma state defense, which again is the best unit on the field of all the units on the field. Yeah. So pretty nervous about the side here i don't i mean either team can win can notre dame put the pressure necessary on spencer sanders to cause a turnover that's he drops back and makes a quick decision and runs and makes plays like it's great but if you get him pressured that's when it looked like there was a problem can notre dame put the pressure on him to cause those turnovers that, that's the question. I mean, Jalen Warren's a really good running back. He stepped in for Chuba Hubbard, had a fantastic year. And it, it, here's one other thing I didn't mention about Notre Dame, too. They're without a, a tackle, Josh Lug, that started 21 games. So if they move oh. the freshman into his role, they could be starting two freshman tackles against this elite defense. I've seen that before. I've watched that up close. When young offensive linemen are going against this veteran defensive line group, that's a bad combo. Again, I'm on Notre Dame already. I don't I don't know that I'll get off it, but I, I know I sound like I'm talking myself off it. I think you're right. Under until you show me you can put points on this team. Yeah. Damn it. Uh, Notre Dame was 11 and 1, 9 and 3 against the spread. Oklahoma State was 11 and 2, 9 3 and 1 against the spread. Both good teams. Fun both game. Good against the spread. This is going to be uh Saturday, January 1st, 10 a.m. Pacific 1 p.m. Oh, that's a nice time slot for you guys in the East Coast. That's that's going to be the game. I mean, it's it's in Glendale, Arizona. Man, man, I may shoot down there. I wish I could shoot down and go to that game. That'd be a fun one. That's going to be that's going to be one of the best bowl games of the bowl season. Yeah, can't wait. Okay, so there's that one. Let's go to another game. I think you're probably going to like the under in the next one too. Iowa, Kentucky. Oh man, Iowa man. against Kentucky. Again, two pretty evenly matched teams here. I I yes. don't know how I don't know how Iowa scores in this game. Let's just start I'm, there. One of the worst offenses nationally. They're 122nd in yards per play. Their defense was lights out, but that offense has really been inept for most of the year. And now they're without their best running back starter. Tyler Goodson has opted out. So what does Iowa do offensively? Start there against what's a pretty good Kentucky defense. I, I don't know how Iowa's going to get enough points here. Minus three for Kentucky. I just like that side based on Iowa's inability to score or what I perceive as their inability to score. I don't, I don't have much analysis beyond that. This is just to me, if I'm picking a side, it's Kentucky. And again, you got to show me you can go over in this game with points. When you look at Iowa's offensive numbers offensively, they are so below like so many people, including – I mean, rushing yards per game, it says 120 average, 177 passing yards a game. It's 205 and 225 for Kentucky. I'm just looking at these numbers. I wrote down a couple numbers, and I'm like, man, it feels like Kentucky should be a bigger favorite, at least on the side. So that's what gives me pause where I'm like, all right, what am I missing? All right, I know it's the SEC, and it's – you know, it opened. I mean, at some point, Iowa was a short favorite and didn't last long. Um, and, you know, most places that opened this game opened it with Kentucky being a small favorite. So, but no move, real big move from two to three, but everybody's painted three. The totals are the lowest of the bowl season, right? 43 and a half, 44, pretty much consensus. Can't get me to play over. I know that it's, it's, it's under how much hangover for Iowa from the big 10 championship. Do you think this carries over? Yeah. Do you think it has much? They got spanked there. I, I don't know how much it does. I, I just, 
I just don't know how good Iowa is. Listen, I know they were top five earlier in the year. This team lives off turnovers. It's top five in turnover margin. So right. if Kentucky doesn't turn it over, Iowa doesn't win the game. I think it's as simple as that. Hard to handicap turnovers. I get it. But that's why I just I just don't like Iowa in this game. All right. Sidewise, I think, oh man, I, I again, maybe, maybe keep an eye on this one. This is going to be on the same time as the Oklahoma State Notre Dame game. <laughs> and I don't think you're going to be watching much of this one. I think it's going to be, you know, a little more competitiveness or whatever the other game. But who knows? I think we'll, 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 we'll jump back and forth. But leaning Kentucky, definitely like the under. Okay. Good. All right. Now let's go to a game. This is one. The next one up, the granddaddy of them all. Oh. I grew up in Big Ten country. You're a Big Ten guy. I'm going to go ahead, and we haven't talked about this. I'm going to make the assumption this is the one for you, right? doesn't matter who's playing. Clear the decks, 5 p.m. East. I'm sitting down. That field, the sun, the weather. For me, that's my great regret when I got out of college athletics, Dave. I wanted so badly when they opened up the Rose Bowl and it was available to teams other than Big Ten and Pac-12, I was so hoping to get a big 12 and then I was going to walk. Never got one. This to me is my game. I love the Rose bowl. We've got Utah, Ohio state this year. Have you ever been? Have not. So my last year of school, Penn state played Oregon in the, in the Rose bowl. And I was like, I'm going. And my dad was like, all right, we'll find a way for you to go. You know? And I, my, my girlfriend at the time was, you know, living in orange County. So I had a place to stay. It was phenomenal. I slept outside, went to the Rose Bowl parade. I'll never do that again. But I've been to multiple Rose Bowls. It is as good as advertised as far as that scene. Like, But it's an old stadium, B.L. Like the narrowest tunnels. There's not a seat other than this you know, main section. It, everything's bleachers. Um, it's very crowded. <laughs> it's, it's, it's Once you get there and you're like, oh, man, this is – you know, when, when you get to your seat, you just look out and you see those mountains and the sun and it's, it's beautiful, but the whole parking on a golf course, that's real. Everybody's just kind of every which way it's different. Um, but this game has always been the game in the sports book too, because it's singled out. It has this middle time slot. So you rush to the book, you get these early games going on. There's three games going on at the same time, and then nothing's going on except the Rose Bowl. So the handle is gigantic. The action is great. And then everybody gets to sit and watch it. So you're right. It's that perfect 2 o'clock time zone out west. It's it's great. And then you get the sun going down in the second half. It gets a little chilly. You dress for the second half. It's beautiful in that first half. You're like, oh, man, it's the high 60s. It's wonderful. And then you're in a you know, low 40s and 50 and you're like oh i was freezing the second half of the first year freezing it was so cold but this game i mean i was again looking so forward to this game if we had the full slate of guys we have opt-outs now of this one can't imagine getting to play in a rose bowl and going you know what i'm good i'm not gonna play uh four it's down to four. Do you see yeah. this line? Yeah. What are we doing here? Yeah, it's down to four. So this one, this one, let's let's take a look at this because Utah comes in, they're hot. They struggled early. A lot of us, me included, I was on their over win total early in the season. And early on, I was like, oh my God, what is happening here? This is yeah. not the Utah team, I thought. And then lo and behold, here they come. Winners of what, six straight, nine out of 10, Cam rising at we quarterback. We were on them. Consistently here on this show too, like we would find a beat way to Oregon talk twice. About Utah. Yeah, yeah. we mean, had them twice. They back to back beatdowns of of Oregon. This is a really good team that does tremendously well in bowls with Kyle Winningham. Yes. Eleven and three in bowls under him. You're going to have the entire state of Utah, except the BYU fans, are going to be in Pasadena. There is going to be a ton. Their first Rose Bowl appearance. This, this there's a lot of things screaming Utah to me. Now you're right. This number's moved a bunch here. I was in at six and a half. I wish I would have got in when it was seven, but I've got Utah plus six and a half here. I, I like them a lot, and you mentioned it. No Garrett Wilson, no Chris Alave at receiver for Ohio State. They're still stacked. I mean, they have 3,000-yard receivers. Two of them are now sitting out. C.J. Stroud had a wonderful year thrown to those guys. It's still Ohio State here, but this feels like all signs pointing to Utah. 
Talk me off Utah here. I can't. I uh, I just think it's going to be a close game. Um, it's going to be a hell of a scene of red because both yeah, a lot of red are red, right? Like it's going to be the the sight lines and the scenes before the game are going to be really wild. Um, I don't think. I mean, I've been at the game. The crowd doesn't matter. It's just when there's a hundred thousand people there, which there are every time. You, there's just a buzz. It's just loud, period. And, and, and yes, it's cool to see more of your colors, but that won't matter. Um, so, again, I got to think about how this game plays out to the total. Now, this one is, what, 64, 64 and a half. I think this thing, it feel, I mean, there hasn't been much movement off the opener 65. Um, it's come down a little bit okay. I think this thing plays to the over. Ooh. With both teams, I do. You're taking a big total over here, huh? I am, which, again, I don't like doing, and I always defer to the under in these situations. But I'm looking at this now with the opt-outs. I think Utah is going to be able to – I think they're going to be able to score. Like, why can't they win this game? I think they could win this game. I agree. CJ, Str- I mean, like, do you just kind of practice with the new wide receivers and throw it all together? And, like, I think the concern here is the disjointed offense for Ohio State in in the in the opt outs. Now they've known they've known that they're opting out probably for a week to two weeks. Like they probably told them right away. So they, they've been practicing. I think the game plays to the over, so that would lead me toward Ohio State now at this number, you know. But I can't talk you off of Utah. I, I like Utah. I want to see a competitive game. So I, I'm i not crazy about the side. I'm really not crazy about the total either. This is a hard one. I think sometimes when you see the numbers in the right, like I don't feel strongly about this at all. Do you, do you feel strongly about Utah? Uh, I felt pretty good about Utah at six and a half. Okay. That's why I hopped on them. I mean, my concerns are this. My concerns are, again, growing up in Big Ten country as an Iowa fan, I saw many times when the whole state of Iowa is out in Pasadena, everybody's giddy, you're ready to go, you've got a great team, and Ronnie Harmon fumbles eight times against Washington. I mean, I've seen when everything's all chips in on this deal, and you go out and you lay an egg when you're not used to being in the the Rose Bowl. So that concerns me a little. My post-traumatic stress from being an Iowa fan growing up in this game gives me a little bit of pause the, the roles are flipped now it's the big 10 team with all the speed that you always right. used to hear about with the old pac 12 teams so right. that concerns me a little bit it's still ohio state utah was very good top 25 in passing yards allowed but man they are thin at cornerback just a couple yeah. weeks ago kyle whittingham in bowl prep was talking about having to move guys to different positions to provide them some depth at the corner well that's that's not where you want to be going against an ohio state offense oh. again albeit without two of their three-headed monster at receiver. I I just think this, though. Ohio State, when they got gashed, it was Oregon on the ground, and it was Michigan just running right at them, right down their throats. What's Utah going to want to do? We just saw Utah do it to Oregon and then hold Oregon in check. So to me, you always tell me this. When you're looking for a dog on on, to cover, you want one that you feel can win outright. I think that's the case here. I won't be stunned at all if, if Utah wins this. That's why I got in just under a touchdown. Line starting to move here is concerning to me if I was going to jump in now, but I like Utah here. Yeah, that's that's where I'm at with it too. I mean, it, that would be – that's the way I'm thinking it plays out. I think the big score capability by Ohio State is, the, <clears throat> is what puts that completely thought in the back of my head where it's going to go over. Like Utah's going to be able to run the ball, and – Ohio State may score in three plays. You know, they may beat somebody deep and and go. So I think they trade scores back and forth, and, and, you know, the winning team gets 35, but the other team, you know, or gets 40. Like, somebody's somebody's running this up, and I think the other team's trade scores. I I like over. Okay. Let's go to another, or you might like over here. If Ole Miss is playing, we've had them in the highest total of the week (laughs) almost every time, but they always go under because the numbers are so big. Let's talk Baylor and Ole Miss in this. Baylor, you talk about one of the surprise teams in the country. They were fantastic. Dave Aranda in year two just did an unbelievable job. Should should have got some national 
coach of the year consideration. They were tremendous. The questions here with Baylor, though, let's start on that side. What's happening at quarterback? Gary Belhannon had a wonderful year, but missed some games down the stretch, including the Big 12 title game. So who's in at quarterback? Blake Shapin for, for Baylor did a nice job, but he's not in. So who's who's going to play? Is Bohannon back? Is he 100% healthy? You've got to take a look at that. On the Ole Miss side, Jeff Levy's headed, the offensive coordinator, he's headed to Oklahoma. But again, you still have Lane Kiffin there. You still have Ole Miss does what it does. And I think the biggest key to me in this game on either side, Matt Corral, the Ole Miss quarterback, is in and playing. This is a short line. I like Ole Miss in this one. I figure you might come in with the Big 12 stuff and, and give me a Baylor. I don't know what to make of Baylor. I was so impressed with their Big 12 championship game and kind of took away like, wow, this is going to be a team I think I want to bet on in the bowl game. And then the matchup is Old Miss in the Superdome. Or is, it, or is it still called the Superdome, right? The Caesar Superdome? Yeah. Um, and – this offense where you know they're going to score like did you see the hype video too that i posted with the old miss yeah. uniform they look they look like my oilers oh my goodness those things are amazing i swear and now because i posted that i'm getting constant advertisements to buy merch and all this <laughs> other stuff it's it's not you touch something on your phone and then it knows it's it's ridiculous um i wish you could tell me what to bet on this game I, I, I don't know. This is another one where I'm like sidewise. I, 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 I think old miss, but man, that Baylor defense is good. Are they going to cause the turnovers necessary? If they get ahead, can old miss come back? Um, yes. Another very, yes, they can. Very intriguing, very intriguing bowl matchup. I mean, they did a good job this year with, with some of these games, like really set teams up with, kind of styles make fights opposite to track all this stuff. I think it's going to be a good game. This one <laughs> under, dare I say under in an old miss Ooh. game? Yeah, we've under done it all 55? year, but this is a low total for Ole Miss. Low total. It's one of their lowest totals right of the season. They're in the 60s every single week. That's oh. that's the respect for the Baylor defense and again a head coach and Dave Aranda, one of the best defensive coordinators before he became a head coach. Listen, Baylor's tremendous. I've been wrong all year on Baylor. I have been I have been fading them for a while, and it has just not worked. They've been excellent. Bohannon is expected to start if you read the reports from this morning. Here's the thing with him. He's the wild card in this, Dave. He was so good early. Through the first six weeks, he did not throw an interception. But then regression hit, and he threw six in a four-game stretch to end the season. Four out of five games, he had at least one interception. So that's the key here is can – they, they manage Bohannon well enough to score but not make a lot of mistakes. Now, before you make your final call here, and then I'll turn this over to you, let me give you one stat that you might be interested in because okay. this is going to come up twice. It's going to come up in this game, and then I'm going to bring it up again when we talk Michigan. This All is right. from our guy Brad Powers okay. on Twitter, Brad Powers 7 bradpowersports.com, excellent college football handicapper. Here's the stat. Teams that were top 10 in rushing yards during the regular season. Are rushing yards 50, for or rushing yards against? Four. Okay. So good rushing teams. Top okay. 10 rushing offenses during the year. Okay. 50 and 28 ATS, 64% in bowls over the last 10 seasons. Teams that can run it have had high-level bowl success against the number over the last 10 years. That's Ole Miss is one of those teams. Who's? Ole Miss qualifies. Ole Miss? Yeah. They can Rushing. run it. They love to run it. Corral can run it. They run the ball. Ole Miss is the first one of these. Wow. That's two out of every three. Now, granted, okay. this thing's already 0-1 because Army Army didn't cover. They won the game, but they didn't cover. So this yeah. trend's already on the year. Air Force is going today. That'll be another one that's up for this. But does that does that trend? I know it's a trend. Yeah. Does that does that change your thought process at all? No. I mean, it, it might for some people. It doesn't for me. But, I mean, it's an interesting trend, and it's something to consider. Um, and, you know, good rushing teams usually win games more than they lose. So it makes perfect sense. 
Oh, if I have to pick a side, B, I'm picking, I'm picking Baylor. I just, I, I, I mm. side with the defense in this. I, I don't want to do it, but um, that's who I like. So, okay. I you're, think the you're game, gonna, you're going to be on the opposite side of Lane Kiffin going for it on fourth down, running backwards, having a triple reverse, throwing it from the press box. I mean, there, this is going to be a cert pitch the tent. Lane's going to bring you some stuff now. Lane's going to bring you some stuff. It doesn't feel good at all. It doesn't. <laughs> and, and I'm sure you could probably wait actually on Baylor and get more points um, as it gets closer to game time. Because I, I think the money's going to come on Ole Miss. The book's going to need Baylor. I just know it. And uh, I'll, I'll take that side. I'm wearing this green, you know, and, and, and stuff. I'm thinking Baylor. All right. Give, give me the next. All right. I don't, I don't want let's go. Up. Let's get in now. We're out of chronological order here, but let's, let's get go. into the playoffs. Come We've on. got two fun games here we're looking forward to. We've got Alabama getting Cincinnati. Cincinnati, as we lovingly say on this program, as Absolutely. an ode to a former West Virginia assistant coach that I love, Cincinnati, yeah. who used to coach at Cincinnati, and he called it Cincinnati. That's why I've always referred to it as Cincinnati, lovingly. Love All right, what do, you, what do you do here? The last time we saw Alabama, they were Alabama. I mean, they absolutely woodshedded Georgia there and looked fantastic. Bryce Young took home the Heisman. It was Saban in an underdog role. You had all the stuff. Now they get the upstart first group of five team in the Bearcats to make it through to the playoffs. And they're, and Alabama's nearly a two-touchdown favorite against Cincinnati here. Now, listen, I like the Bearcats, man. They've been growing up with these veterans for a long time. Yes. Luke fickle has been fantastic there, especially the last two years they haven't lost. They come into Desmond Ritter at quarterback is really good. They have pros on this team. This isn't just an upstart plucky group of five here. This is a legitimate program that has pros. They might have two first rounders at the cornerback position. Can, can Cincinnati keep it within two touchdowns here against Alabama? I certainly think so. I do. I, uh, I know why the number is the number because it's Alabama. You have to put this number – you had to put the number at 14 and get the Cincinnati money early because what happens in this situation is, all right, this is the midday game, 1230 start Pacific, 330 start Eastern on Friday. There's no money. I mean, there's been bets on this game, but there hasn't been the money. The money comes in Vegas. Everybody gets here for New Year's the day before, two days before. So they're starting to come tomorrow, Wednesday. And everybody's going to be coming and betting Alabama because it's Alabama. So the number's now 13. It's going to get driven back up to 13 and a half or 14 very quickly. In some places, it already has. You still have some 13 and a halves, the majority of the country. Um, I like Cincinnati. I do. Oh. I think I think they can keep it close. Outside shot at winning. I don't want to see Alabama, Georgia again. I just don't. One of these dogs has to win the game for, for me, for, you know, college football. Yeah. It would be cool to see a rematch. And then I would be obviously rooting for Georgia to somehow slay the dragon, take down the evil empire that is Alabama. But then you watch Alabama play and you're sitting there holding the ticket on Cincinnati plus 13 or plus 13 and a half go. I bet against this team. I actually <laughs> took real money and bet against this team. When they're uh -huh. winning by 28 and they're whooping it up on the sideline and Saban's yelling at them to, you know, we got another game. You know that could very well happen. Um, you you want to bet Cincinnati? I mean, you don't you, you like the favorite, don't you? You do. I, I I'm with you. I really want Cincinnati to <laughs> I, at least be competitive here. I mean, I give give us a a fun playoff game because there's blowouts Please. every year on this. Please. I I just – it's hard to go against Alabama, and I've got competing trends for you. You like it when I give you trends? Here you go. Here Alabama go. is just 10-9 and nine against the spread under Saban. Okay. All right. 10-9 what? what? In bowls? Against the spread. In bowls, yeah. In bowls under Saban. I was going to say, there were more but, than 19 games. What are you talking about? But they've, they've won the last five college football playoff semis by an average of 20 points. Ugh. Do we do we fade Saban in a big moment? I mean, that just doesn't seem smart, does it? No, it doesn't. That it, that doesn't seem smart. Eighty nine to twenty seven are the scores in those games, those five games at halftime. First half scores: eighty nine for Bama, twenty seven for those opponents. That courtesy of Sporting News. I don't know. Alabama minus seven in the first half. This, this feels 
Maybe if it gets over two mm-hmm. touchdowns, I got to look at Cincinnati. But my goodness, I'm afraid to go against Alabama. I just am. Cincinnati might be the right side. I'm afraid to go against Alabama. Luke Fickle isn't afraid. I mean, he's played in big games. And, like, I, I feel like maybe some years past, like, the teams weren't going to be prepared or weren't well, – like, the moment was going to be too big. I don't feel that at all for Cincinnati or Luke Fickle. Like, I know – that they're going to be ready. Now, can they match Alabama? Um, I think they can first unit to first unit, but as soon as anything happens or, or, or whatever, I I don't know. Again, I want to see it. Am I crazy about it? No totals 58, right? Let me see 50, 58, pretty much painted across the world. This game go under. Well, how? Okay, so yeah, so I was going to ask you this: Alabama's given up two and a half yards of carry. Is Cincinnati going to come in and run it on them? Can Cincinnati uh, run it on Alabama? Two and a half I, yards of carry. I don't. I, I don't think they're going to be able to run, but I think they'll be able to pass. I mean, you've seen Alabama be susceptible to the pass a little bit. Um, All right, let me ask you this: You're you're a, you're a longtime odds maker in parts unknown and in Vegas. Yep. If if Notre Dame were playing Alabama. We just talked about how good Notre Dame was. Great season. What's the line? Same. What's what's Alabama's face? Same. Probably. You make it the same. Yeah, it's not much lower. It's it's. I mean, only because Cincinnati beat Notre Dame, right? Right. That's was, why I'm asking. Yeah. Cincinnati yeah, was, went on the road, won at Notre Dame. That's why we're having this conversation. Yeah. That's what punched their ticket. They go undefeated. They needed a signature win. They got it. Then Notre Dame upheld hits end of the bargain by winning 11 games. So you th- you you make that still even. Could Notre Dame beat Alabama? Would you take Notre Dame at two touchdowns against Alabama? I would not. You would not? Only because I've seen that in years past, and I can't get that out of my head, where Notre Dame has gone, and like some of the biggest bets I ever made were betting against Notre Dame in a bowl game with Alabama. Like I just – a little soft spot um, for, for me in those situations. Those I felt were bigger mismatches. If Alabama played Notre Dame this year, I feel like – would be a bigger mismatch. Now, this might be the year that Notre Dame would make it competitive. Um, I just think that Cincinnati's quarterback play is superior to Notre Dame's. And I think that Cincinnati's defense is superior to Notre Dame's. So that's why I think they have a shot in this game. Um, Can they win? Okay, go to what you always tell me. If you want to take the dog, you like to take them when they have a chance to win. Can Cincinnati beat Alabama? They have to play a perfect game. They have to play a perfect game. They can. I think they can. I think the storybook <clears throat> can be written um, where they could win. Listen to us. We're doing it. <clears throat> We're talking to ourselves on the Cincinnati. <clears throat> Excuse me. I'm getting choked You're up. You're talking because- yourself. I don't think I can do it. I don't think I, I can't can do, do it. it. I can't. I mean, I can't do it. I'm going to I want to do it. I don't think I can do it. This will be, this will be the in-game. This will be the in-game betting thing for me. And I'm actually hosting uh, an in-game live show on Friday. It's a five hour show scheduled on new year's Eve for the Michigan and Georgia game. So I'll be on for that one, which doesn't allow me, you know, to, to make a lot of bets and stuff, but like this one here, will be one that I'm telling the kids and stuff. Listen, I'm watching this game. And that's they know what that means. I'll probably be making bets during the game. Um we'll know well, let early. Let me give you let me give you an unsolicited plug for your in-game stuff. I would encourage everybody that's watching this watch Dave's in-game. One of my one of my bigger hits since I've been doing this was Alabama National Championship. You were on the phone with me. We were watching it while oh, we were talking, making bets. We had both sides. We did DraftKings. You're wearing the hat. They gave us a nice boost on. I don't even remember which side it was, the over or the under. We yeah. took that, got it. Then at halftime, you kept, wait, 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 hit it now. Hurry up. Get it in. Get it in. Get it in. We got it as the number was moving. So you know your stuff on in-game. So I encourage people, if you like this stuff, check out Dave during the in-game on this stuff. It'll be, he's good at that. We hit, we hit a nice middle on that game. We, we did. We got both of them. Yeah. Yeah. We had, we, we waited because it was a fast. See, that's the thing. Like, you got to watch the first half. And, like, Bama first half may be the best bet of this entire game. 
Minus seven right now. It's been a freight train. Minus seven. Not as good this year as last, but pretty good. Minus seven for the Tide. That might be it. And then Cincinnati hanging around. So just just keep that in mind. And and we'll 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 actually follow us both on Twitter. Maybe we'll tweet it out. I did it the other day. Did you you got that Suns play the other day? Uh, on the yeah, yeah, right. You need to do that more. Your Twitter handle at Sports BK can sing is great. But I would appreciate it if you would just come in once in a while and drop. Like I didn't even research. I didn't. That was a blind tail. Dave says Suns at halftime. Okay, good. Got it. Took it. I actually got a better number. I got six and a half at the time. Oh, I was yeah. I was doing the show in game live, and and I was like, wait a second. They moved this thing all the way down to I saw seven or seven yeah. and a half, and seven I was half, like, yeah. wait, they were fifteen before the game. I went and looked at the box score. I was like, geez, they shot under 50% in the first half. They're going to blow this team out in the second half. And they, they ended did. up doing it. So do we'll more be- of that. Yeah. Can you give me more of that, please? All right, last thing I'll give you, because you said something interesting there. We've also seen Saban before. Listen, he gets the lead, and he just chokes you out here. There could be the back door open for Cincinnati on this number because Alabama just says, hey, listen, we're up by 24. We're up by 17. I'm not getting fancy here. I'm just going to run the ball and get out of here. Yeah. So that could also be in play if you like Cincinnati and don't think they could win. That's an option as well. Which, which again, is a unique thing to this game because everyone in a bowl game has one game except the winner of this game and the next game. So once they get that lead and there's eight minutes left in the fourth quarter and they're up 20, this thing can come back because the kids for losing team, I mean, everybody's still playing, but the winning team knows we got another game. So back door is very, very open for that game. All right, let's go to the next one. I, I'm excited to watch this one as oh, well. I can't wait. Georgia and Michigan, because you're getting Georgia, speaking of Alabama, you get Georgia, who was absolutely pummeled by Alabama there. So you get Georgia in a frame of mind that's resetting. They've got to get back to showing us that those defensive statistics early on in the season or all season in the regular season weren't fraudulent because Alabama made them look fraudulent. Now it's Alabama. I get it. And there's some dudes on that Georgia defense now. I mean, they have got some guys, maybe generational type of guys. Do they regather and they're going to get a Michigan team that says what? We're going to line up and we think we can punch you right in the mouth and run on you. There's your first question. Michigan has been fantastic. You talk about a great comeback story. Uh, Jim Harbaugh has to take less money, redo his contract. Everybody's off the Harbaugh and Michigan bandwagon. And all they do is just absolutely roll people this year. They've been fantastic. So I'll give you some numbers, but just overall theory, Georgia in a bounce back spot off the loss to Alabama, Michigan rolling. They finally get Ohio State. No letdown at all against Iowa in the Big Ten title game. Here they are in the playoff. Who do you like? Saw this opening number, and I know why they did it. And I was trading text with a couple of guys like that work in a couple of the books here in town to get this number. And I mean, somebody came as high as 10 and it was nine, eight and a half. That's what it settled at nine, eight and a half. And it's down to seven and a half because you're either of two school of thoughts. One Michigan's very live to win the game and getting more than a touchdown is, is the right side or two Georgia is just way better. And you're getting them at a somewhat discount less than 10 because they got, you know, their doors blown off by maybe the best team in the country in Alabama, what everybody saw last. Um, First thought is it's too many points. But again, I was on Michigan when they went to, when they played Ohio state, thought that line was wrong. It was, they won outright. Then when they played Iowa, that didn't give them enough points and Mm -hmm. laid it again in the big 10 championship so recency bias, I like Michigan. I want to see, I don't want to see Alabama, Georgia again in the final. So I'm leaning Michigan. I, I, I like them to win the game. The total is very interesting. It came very low, it came 42. It's up to 45, 45 and a half playing to the over. That makes me a little nervous that Georgia could win this game by 10 points or more. Fascinated to watch from a couple of different angles. So let's get down in the weeds just a little bit here. We saw Alabama control that defensive line for Georgia and have an effectiveness throwing it. So they didn't control the line to run it. They controlled the pass rush to be able to throw it. 
Bryce Young went bananas. Yeah. Michigan is going to have to run. I mean, they just have to run it to be That's able to generate. Best, though. That's what they do. So it's strength on strength. Yeah. So what are you going to get there? Now, flip around to the other side. Well, let me give you one quick PFF, pro football focus stat. Michigan led the country in EPA. We like to talk EPA, expected points added. Michigan led the country in expected points added on trick plays. Michigan. <laughs> Bo Schembechler. Three, what? What? Bev Schemba. Uh, trick plays for Harbaugh. So they were very good at that. Now, you can't win games based on trick plays alone. Michigan's going to have to be able to establish the line of scrimmage and run it. Now flip over here because I think this is even more interesting. What's Michigan do so well defensively? Pass rush. Yes. Those two ends, Aiden Hutchinson, they're fantastic. But be Georgia, the number one pick in the draft, by the way. Might be. Very well might be. They yeah. get after you. But here's the thing. If Georgia can run the ball, that pass rush is neutralized not only on the running plays, but then what Georgia's going to do in the passing game, now they can RPO you. They can play action pass, which RPO, they'll do more than anybody for else. For the people that don't know, what is RPO? That's run pass option. So we'll Stenson Bennett pass. puts it in, reads the end, but you can't just pin your ears back and come. So – can Michigan stop Georgia on early downs and force them into pure passing downs? If they do, then you've got a huge advantage because I'm not sure Stenson Bennett can stand back there in standard passing downs and beat you with this pass rush. But if right. Georgia can run it early and keep it in second and medium, third and short, and Georgia can just RPO you or play action you, Michigan's defense is in some trouble. Yeah. Uh, the ball, the, the, the trick play thing. I like because that's coaching and then that's execution and I'm good with that. You know, I mean, trick plays are part of the game. So can Michigan put them into passing downs, long passing downs? That's yeah, it's got to be I'm not passing downs. If they do, then the advantage flips to that Michigan defense. Right. Um, but if they don't, George is going to score. Yes. Um, can Michigan win this game and the game go over? Can Michigan win a shootout? Put it that way. I, it feels like no. No. But, I, I mean, Georgia doesn't do that either. That's why, I, you know, that total at 42 is really low, so I can see why it's ticking up. But this is going to be – I mean, now unless Michigan busts through that, that front seven and takes off for some big explosive runs, it doesn't feel like this is a back-and-forth shootout game. This feels like under to me. And it, it, this feels like Michigan. I think they're live on the money line. B. How I can't, I can't get away from it. I think they are live on the money line. This might be the year it all comes together for Harbaugh where um, they win this game. I, I, I think Michigan can win this game. I do. This, this is just one of those. And as good as Kirby smart is as good as, as good as Georgia is, they, they can win this game too. I, I just think, the, the bet for me is plus the points. The bet for me is under. I think it's, I think this is defensive. I think the other game is, is over. And again, could be dead wrong. I just, I like to, to look at the games from the total standpoint and work backwards to decide. So that's why it's so hesitant to say Cincinnati's live in the other game. I just, I mean, it's, it just seems like it's just an insurmountable thing to go against Alabama. It would be the biggest upset in a long time. This one yeah. wouldn't be as big of an upset to me if the dog won. Agree or disagree with that statement? Agree, and I'm already on Michigan. I played it really early. I thought I was getting a good number at seven and a half, and it just it just sat there at seven and a half. So I'm on I'm on Michigan at seven and a half right now. Newbie, I'll ask you um, your thoughts on both of the playoff games. Do you, do, do you like the dog? Do you like the favorite? And are you going to watch the games? I mean, I'll watch them, but I just, I mean, it's looking like it's going to set up for Alabama, Georgia again and again and again. So like until they show me what they got, Brad, how, yeah. you know, I, I hope that we have a fun upset. I just, I don't see it happening. So if it was me, Mr. Square behind the board here, uh, I would be going Cincinnati or I would be going Alabama and Georgia, but um I think I like the case you made for Michigan. No, that, that makes yeah. me a little intrigued that you guys are thinking that that could be an upset. So I'll be watching the games. I'm looking forward to it, but um, 
I can't look any other way than Alabama, Georgia. What's on the menu uh, for New Year's oh, Day? You know, I got the pigs in a blanket. I just got a smoker for Christmas. So, uh, oh, hey, we need to have an eight in the box get together hooting nanny because uh, I'll be throwing <laughs> down for you guys. You guys get me cashing tickets every week. I gotta, I gotta return the favor with some good eats, boys. Oh boy, in, I'm uh, in. Yeah, this this uh, pork and sauerkraut. Uh, tradition has somehow morphed its way to our house i mean grandma makes these these big ass dough balls and all this other stuff You're supposed to be eat this and it gets everything away for the past year i don't understand it i know that thing sits in my stomach for like a day um but that's probably what we'll be doing for this game uh friday night man i can't wait be how where are you going to be watching the games uh i probably at the house i mean i got okay. the house we'll have we'll have it going here i've got some some work to do leading into the week with some uh some radio duties we have but i'm I'm jack this is a fun week and again recording on tuesday i can't wait for today we got football coming up here in just a bit let's go let's go down to the final few days of college football and then we have to wait another nine months give me your playoff What's it going to be? What are we What are we going to be talking about after Friday? Are we going to be talking about the you know the rematch, the SEC rematch, or or, or what are we, What are we going to be talking about? Uh, for college football's sake, I I hope it's not. Please. I hope it's not the rematch. I yeah. mean, let's go. All right. I hope it's Alabama Michigan. That's the one I want to see. I, I I want to see that. That's going to be the championship game is in Indianapolis, and we'll be back to talk about you know the next thing about that game and then about maybe we'll morph into some other stuff, some, some NFL playoffs, things like that. Um, but you know, right now let's, let's, let's root for that for, for everybody watching for everybody, you know, maybe, maybe people want to see Alabama, Georgia again. I don't. So that's, I'm rooting Alabama, Michigan. That's would be Cincinnati, Michigan would be, I don't know how many people would want to see that, exe- you know, exec wise and TV wise and stuff. That would be amazing. That would be. I'll take ultimate. that too. Yeah, I'll take that. I, I, I'll take that one. That would be that would be great. But I don't think we get that lucky and get both dogs. I don't think that happens. All right, boys, that's going to do it for the show. Again, thanks for joining us um, and watching, subscribing on Cash Considerations Podcast on the YouTube or following along. Eight in the box, subscribing wherever you get podcasts. Um, hope everybody had a Merry Christmas. Happy New Year to everybody watching and listening to you and your families. Again, for the boys, he's Dan Alexander producing the show at Newbie Talks on the Twitter. For the quarterback of the show, Brad Howe07 on the Twitter. B. Howe, great job. You know, hug the kids. Merry, you know, have a great New Year's, whatever you guys do. We'll be staying up late. But that's what we do over here in the Hamptons with the, with the little consigs. <laughs> they run the whole house. For myself, Dave Sherapan, the Sportsbook Conciliary, at SportsBK Consig on the Twitter. Thank you again. We'll talk to you guys next week, hopefully talking about Alabama, Michigan. <laughs>